topic three is Christian vocation. Vocation means a calling from God to serve God and his people. We've all been given talents. Talents are abilities from God to be used for his service. We can respond to God's call in three ways. Firstly, we can be a member of the laity. That's people like you and me, members of the church. We've been baptized, but we're not ordained or in a religious order. We can live out our lives supporting the church, giving out communion, reading at mass, helping with finances, running classes for confirmation and Holy Communion. The other way we can serve God is holy orders. This is when men become ordained to become deacons, priests or bishops. Finally, religious orders, women and men who live in a religious community, nuns and monks, people who take vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. This clip will be covering the terms of vocation, laity, priesthood, ordination, etc. The roles of lay people, deacons, priests and the religious. We'll know the vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. We'll know about the service of ordination. And finally, we will know about the arguments for and against celibacy, that's no sexual relations, and also women priests. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, we hear of what Jesus wants us all to do. He says, go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you and I will be with you always to the end of the age. We have a vocation whether it's laity, priesthood or religious. A master went on a journey but before he left he gave his three servants some talents. The first one he gave five to second one he gave them gave that person two and the third one he gave that person one talent when he went the person with five doubled theirs to ten the person who had two doubled theirs to four and the person who had one decided to bury theirs when the master returned he was pleased with the man who had got ten talents and four talents for the next one he was furious with the one who had buried their talent. You wicked and lazy servant. You know that I harvest where I have not sown. You should have deposited it with the banker and received interest. Take that talent away from him and give it to the one who has 10. He then said, you worthless servant. Throw him into the darkness where he will be weeping and gnashing his teeth. Here is a summary of the parable of the talents. The meaning of this parable. Everyone has been given by God talents, gifts and abilities. We need to use our talents and not waste them. At the end of time, we will be judged according to how well we have used the talents that God has given us. We should all live a good and active life, not a lazy one or a self-centred one. As St Mark said, whoever wants to be great amongst you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. Let's have a look at laity or lay Christians. The laity or lay people are those who have been baptised into the Catholic Church but who do not take holy orders or religious vows. We are called to be witnesses to Christ in our daily lives and to build Christ's church on earth. We are here to explain the principles which Christ taught, to defend Christ's teaching through prayer, faith and love and to apply Christ's teachings to our daily lives. So what do lay people do? Well, they support the priest by giving out communion, reading at mass, saying prayers, etc. They often offer their skills such as building, running youth clubs, management and accounting, and they support those with problems. At our baptism, lay people were given the task of number one, priestly duties to build the bridge between God 
and it's his people, a prophetic duty, which is the messenger of God, and finally, a kingly duty to give our lives to the service of God and his people. A deacon is a minister who can lead some services in the church, for example, baptism and marriage, and they can also read at mass and visit the sick. These people can be employed full-time outside of the church. They can be single or married. A permanent deacon can also be training for the priesthood. So there are three parts of the work of a deacon. The liturgy part, the word, and finally the charity part of their work. He is obedient to the bishop and may be asked to carry out extra parish duties. They may be asked to work in a university or a hospital or a prison. There are three aspects of holy orders, which means ordination into the church. We have bishops who are successors of the apostles. They're responsible for the priests and the deacons in the diocese. Priests, they work with the bishop to preach the gospel, to celebrate mass and to care for God's people. Deacons, they support a priest in the caring role in the parish. So what can a priest do that a deacon can't? A deacon cannot say mass. They can't do the sacrament of reconciliation or the last rites, which is the anointing of the sick. There are three roles of a priest. Disciple, he has said yes to God's call. Apostle, he is sent out to serve others. A presbyter, he has a duty to care and support people in his parish. He is the one who presides. He leads, gathers the faithful to mass and gives absolution. The role of a priest is to celebrate mass, to proclaim the word, preaching and sharing God's message, conduct funerals, do charitable work, do sacraments of initiation such as baptism and Holy Communion, to do marriages, to visit the sick, to do the sacrament of reconciliation, to lead the Christian community in worship and to lead the parish council. The duties of a priest fall into two categories, pastoral and sacramental. Pastoral is like a shepherd, visiting the sick, leading the parish council, etc. Sacramental is saying mass, celebrating the sacraments. You need to know the rite of ordination of a priest. That is the service where a man becomes a priest. There are eight parts of the service. Number one, they're presented to the bishop. Number two, examination. They're asked a number of questions by the bishop. Number three is prostration. They lie on the floor in front of the altar. Number four is consecration. The bishop lays his hands on the candidate's head. Number five is prayer. Number six is investment. He is dressed as a priest. He's given something called a stole and a chaucible. He's then anointed on his palms of his hands. And then he gets the opportunity to say mass with the bishop. He is given a pattern and chalice. Stop this clip to read more about the examination of the candidate. Here is the rite of ordination in a table form. I'd like you to remember the acronym PEP, C, P, M. PEP is presentation, examination and prostration. C is consecration and P, M is prayer, investment, anointing and mass. So you need to know the various parts of the service. Presentation to the bishop examination through a number of questions, prostration lying on the floor showing that he gives his life to Christ, consecration is laying on of hands by the bishop, prayer is prayer thanks for God to God, investment is given a stole and a chaucible, anointing is anointing his hands and finally given a pattern and chalice and getting the opportunity to say mass with the bishop. This is a classic GCSE question. Should priests be allowed to get married or should they remain celibate and have no sexual relationships? Yes, they should get married. Peter was married. 
they may have a better understanding of what marriage is about. It's only natural for people who want to have children and get married. Celibacy can distance a priest from ordinary life. There would be definitely more vocations to the priesthood if they could get married. Other churches have allowed married priests. No priest shouldn't get married. They promise to be celibate. They're following Christ's example. They're focusing on Christ and his church. They're not getting distracted with the family and children. The church can't afford to support family members. It's a tradition. Marriage and priesthood are separate vocations. Stop the clip and see more information on this slide. Stop the clip and see more arguments for and against priests getting married. A GCSE question is often about the ordination of women, women being allowed to become priests. The arguments for this is that Mary the mother of Jesus had a priestly role. Women were very important in the early church. Other traditions have changed in the church, so why can't we have women priests? Times have changed from the time of Jesus. Women's position in society is now very different. God created men and women in his own image. Therefore, we should have both represented on the altar. Other churches allow women priests. Arguments against a priest models Christ who is male and celibate. Tradition in the Catholic Church from the time of Jesus, who only chose men as his apostles. Women have a different vocation. They can be nuns or they can be members of the laity. Here is a table form of whether women should be priests or not. Have a look, stop the clip and have a look. There is a long tradition of men only and we can't break that tradition. But we could say other traditions have been changed in the church. Christ only appointed apostles. Well, there is evidence in the early church that women did have standing in society. They were important in the early church. Women can serve in the laity and nuns, but some women are called to be priests. They should be able to answer that call. Priests are symbols of Jesus, who is a man. We're all made in the image and likeness of God. Also, women are often the strongest in the family at passing on the faith. Also, there is a shortage of priests. So therefore, men and women should be able to be priests. You have to decide in your GCSE answer. Stop this video clip and have a look at this GCSE question. Should women be ordained? The final vocation that we're going to talk about is called the religious vocation. These people are called the religious. They are nuns and monks. They either live in communities or they live outside in society. They dedicate themselves to God and they take three vows, the vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. They live in a holy way in a religious community. The vow of poverty is living simply, sharing talents, money and material goods for the support of the community. The vow of chastity is not to take a wife or a husband or a partner and not to have sexual relationships. They give their life to love and serve God. The vow of obedience is obey obeying the superior, the person in charge of their order. They're to do God's will, not their own. It's important for you to know that there are two types of religious life. The first one is apostolic. These mon monks and nuns lead a public life of prayer. They're teachers, they're nurses, they work with the elderly, the homeless, drug addicts and alcoholics. You also have contemplative religious life. These people are enclosed in their community. They lead a hidden life of prayer. They make liturgical vestments, etc. They are enclosed and they pray for many, many hours every day. Stop the clip and just check that you know all of the things listed on the slide.